Have you read From Blood and Ash? Okay, now we're ready. Ah, maybe not. Okay, <laughs> Okay, we're ready. Hi, how are you? My name is Carrie. There are a lot of new faces. Um, so I thought I'd do another little q and I get a lot of the same questions, so if I answer the same ones from my last Q&A, um, I apologize. Thank you for having a fantastic memory and for watching my videos. But the one that I, across the board, I got not only in this, but um, in my comment section, in my messages all the time is, number one, how do I read my books? And number two, how are you okay with reading the way that you do? And so, in case you're curious, I do in fact read on an iPad. Yes, I do. And I'm gonna go into like how I get my book. But yeah, for those who ask, this is me and my dog who lives in America. I don't. This is the iPad 10 and a half inch. I won it in a contest. It is the best gift I've ever received. So, Second question, when I'm reading so often on ebooks, um, people ask, why don't my eyes hurt? And um, for that question, I'm actually gonna send it over. We have, a, we have an agent in the field. Carrie, are you there? Hi, yes, so this video is actually sponsored by glassesusa.com, which is a service that I have been using since 2018, it's been a while. Glassesusa.com is an online source for eyeglasses and sunglasses. What's really interesting about them is that they will do prescription on both eyeglasses, but also sunglasses. If you know me, you know that I actually have pretty much perfect vision. In 2018, I started having difficulty seeing. I went to an eye doctor, everything, and it turns out that my eyes were just tired and stressed and strained and dry. And so I started looking into um, blue light blocking lenses. And so that is when Glasses USA came in clutch because along with prescription, they can also apply blue light blocking science <laughs> onto all of their frames. So that is how I actually read on my iPad. I can see such a difference as far as especially when I'm reading right before bed, if I don't wear a blue light blocker, even if I have the nighttime setting on, it's so much more difficult for me to fall asleep. Even if you don't, you've never thought about needing glasses, I would highly recommend getting yourself a pair of blue light blocking lenses. So I have this pair. These are my two new glasses. I, um, I have a ton, <laughs> but I also got some sunglasses for this summer. And so they have over 9,000 frames online, so I'm sure that you can find one that you like. And if you're unsure like me, like you've never dealt with eyeglasses prior to this, they have an online try-on feature where you can upload a picture of yourself or take a picture with your webcam and try on glasses. And if you do get them and they aren't exactly what you want, um, there is free shipping and returns, 100% money back guarantee, full refund within 14 days, no questions asked, and a 365 day product warranty. So definitely check them out. There will be a link in the description box leading you to glassesusa.com. I highly recommend. Like I said, I kick myself when I don't use them. So definitely check them out. Back to you in the studio, Carrie. Thanks, Carrie. So yeah, that is um, how I do things. And so adding on to that as far as how I actually get my books um, really quickly, I talk about it all the time, but um, I use two different apps. One is called Overdrive and one is called Libby and they are tied to your library card and you can borrow ebooks and audiobooks. So yeah, that is what I use. Um, and that kind of leads me into a couple other questions which are pertaining to, will I ever do a bookshelf? What's going on with the light? How am I so white? So yeah, there were a lot of questions asking me about will I do a bookshelf tour? Let's see those bookshelves. So you can see these piles here. This is a mixture of myself and my husband. This is almost 50-50 now. I used to have all the books, but um, now it's 50-50. The reason that I probably won't do a bookshelf tour is because this is it. This is, <laughs> this is it. But also I don't really buy physical books anymore. If I do buy a book, I will actually buy an ebook, which if you told me this up to like four years ago, I would have thought you were crazy because 
I love physical books so much, but because I live in a small one-room apartment with another human, um, and also I am probably going to be moving, like I don't I don't feel any sense of permanence in my life right now. Um, so I could be moving probably abroad. So I would either be moving back to America or maybe to Europe or somewhere. Um, so the idea of packing up and moving books, ah, I've done that once for college and for moving here and it is no fun no fun at all. So um, until I'm in a more permanent space, I will not be buying a whole lot of physical books. And one day I hope to do a bookshelf tour. I do hope to have a lot of books, but that is just not my, not my reality right now. So um, now I'm just going to kind of go in order because I thought that those were the only ones that kind of went together. So we're just going to slide through your questions. I'm very excited. Who was your favorite child in House on the Cerulean Sea? That is such a hard question, but I think I feel like I have to go with um, Lucy or what's his name? The bellhop, Sh Shauncey, is that his name? When they introduced the character of Lucy, that was the first time when I like actually belly laughed out loud. Like I, I literally was reading it and I went like, ha! In public it was embarrassing but yeah I I would say those two but I gotta read it again I feel like it, it needs a reread soon shadow and bone needs six of crows but six of crows doesn't need shadow and bone <laughs> the book that you have reread the most so here's the thing I had I'm sure you guys have these too so I'm not embarrassed but I used to have just like books that I would put in the bathroom and like they were your bathroom reading books so those ended up being the ones that I would just reread constantly so I would say probably like honestly Haruki Murakami short story collections probably after the quake honestly not my fave but I've read it so many times I've definitely reread the Harry Potters a lot and maybe Twilight Cause that was another one where it was like, I just want to read something and um, Twilight worked. But there is a book, I'm gonna find it cause I know that I found it on Goodreads once, but I thought it was a fever dream and it's called Beauty. And it's like, I think maybe Snow White inspired. I don't know. I just remember that there was a crazy stepmother trying to, or maybe mom. Maybe it was just her mom, like trying to kill this girl because her daughter was becoming more beautiful than her. I don't know. I just know that I read that book a bazillion times and I still think that I kind of dreamt it up, but I did find it on Goodreads. So I'll link it down below if I remember it. There's that. <laughs> okay, a lot of people asked, what is a book that is a good recommendation to start getting into the fantasy genre? That's an interest, that's a hard one because I feel like fantasy is so wide um and people love so many different parts of it maybe i'll do like a separate video but like think about what you already like in content i didn't really understand this about myself until i had like a moment of clarity after reading six of crows but i really like heist movies i really like spy and like action movies i loved the jason bourne movies when I was a kid like I don't know anyway so that's why for me getting into Shadow and Bone or getting into Six of Crows was so seamless because it was like yes heist action love it if you're really interested in romance there are definitely a lot of fantasy romance for you to go into if you really want to know in the comments maybe leave things that you're already interested in um, and then hopefully myself and our lovely community can give you some recommendations because I do think that fantasy is very, very wide. Also just read Howl's Moving Castle because you should. <laughs> Have you read From Blood and Ash? Have you read um, Heyman Sunim books? Yes, I actually have it on my shelf. Or do I have it here? Would that be? That would be too easy. Anyway, fantastic book. Very good. If you are feeling anxious or any kind of negative emotions, read this book. Um, you can. It's all like tiny little blurbs. I recommend. <laughs> what is your opinion on self-help, self-developing books? Um, I have yet to really read a self-help book that is like actually sold and marketed as self-help. I think that I've talked about the book of joy, which I think is more of a philosophy book. 
and that actually ended up being kind of a self-help book but for books that are straight up like out here I'm self-help they're a little cheesy for me I don't I have not met a self-help book that I have liked if you have self-help books that you want me to read I could make a video about that but I have not I'm not enthusiastic about the genre now. What book brings up the strongest memories because of the time you read it in? Um, I can't say like a specific book, but I do underline lines in my books, which some people drive them crazy, but that's, they're my books. So I have had instances where I will be rereading a book and I will see an underlined passage or an underlined line and I will know, I'll like remember what I was feeling at the time when I underlined it. Oh, one weird thing though, is that there's such a huge difference between reading a book on the ground and reading a book in an airplane for some reason i distinctly remember every book that i've ever read on an airplane i read wilder girls that was actually god kind of probably a bad choice that was right when the pandemic kind of like started this was in january um in i live in korea so we were kind of very beginning of it we saw a lot of Stuff going on and um so i was flying to japan and i remember that like we had to wear masks and it was really when we first started wearing them it just felt very strange looking back on it now like what i would feel weird without a mask but like at that time i felt really kind of odd and then i ended up reading wilder girls which is it's not about like well it kind of is about like a disease and so it wasn't my greatest choice but i have a very strong memory of that reading that on an airplane so there it is. <laughs> what do you use as a bookmark? Do you annotate books? Okay, is anyone else triggered by all of the TikTok content that is going around right now of like my these book habits that drive people crazy? Oh, one of them came up on my Instagram and I was like laughing but also like so uncomfortable. I don't like do you with your books? I don't really care, but at the same time there this girl was like, "Yeah, instead of dog earing the page i just rip out part of the corner and i was just like ah so um what do i use as a bookmark i use nothing honestly sometimes i just remember the page number if it is a physical book which is a weird trait to have it's like a flex but you know i do i can remember numbers really well or i'll just use a receipt usually it's a receipt um bookstores that give you a free bookmark with your purchase Keep going, I love you. Um, and then do you annotate your books? Not really, um, like I said, I will underline a line if I just find that it's interesting. As far as like actually annotating, um, no. Sometimes I feel like I should, but. Okay, a ton of you guys were asking about erotic books. <laughs> I don't know if you saw my reaction to From Blood and Ash, but it's not my style. So um, erotica is not not on my bookshelf, unfortunately. I'm sorry, darling. What book made you laugh hard um, that you had to keep put the book down and collect yourself? Um, A Shadow Between Us, <laughs> most recently, but definitely House in the Cerulean Sea had me just like hard cackling, honestly. Like it was a lovely, lovely book. That like, the Shadow Between Us, I was laughing because I was like, this cannot be real. This is so ridiculous. But House in the Cerulean Sea was actually like funny and meant to be funny. So um, yeah, if you're looking for a good a good laugh, um, I will recommend House in the Cerulean Sea until I die. So please read it. <laughs> Reading ebooks is hard and slow for me, but I can't afford to buy actual books. What should I do? Okay, I had a really, really hard time getting into ebooks. I'm not gonna lie. And I only read them because of that. Like access to books for me wasn't as easy as it was back home. And I didn't have them. I wasn't gonna start buying a ton of books. So it was a thing that I had to honestly read books that I already loved. Like I had to read a really good book that drew me in so that no matter what I was gonna finish it um so I would recommend trying that if you can um maybe going into your library and finding ebooks that are you know true to you you know that you're gonna read them um reread an old favorite whatever and then slowly hopefully you will kind of get into it and now actually I find that it's easier for me to read an ebook than it is to read a physical book which again 
tell past Carrie this, she would call you a liar, but it is true. I have joined the e-book crew. Someone asked, what is the first book you remember reading? And I know that I read before this, but the book that I remember was like my transition book was honestly Harry Potter. I remember my mom read the first one out loud to me. And then by the time the second one came out, or perhaps maybe it was the third one, that's when I was like, I transitioned and I was like able to read a chapter book all by myself, like of that length. Um, so I don't remember like the first book that I ever read. I do have a strangely strong memory of reading the children's illustrated classics version of Robinson Crusoe. I like remember sitting in my driveway out front reading that. Um, best and worst film slash show adaptations of novels. Okay, so for the best, there are so many and I actually wanna make a video about it. Um, so I'm gonna save those for later. But for the worst, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna rant for a second about this. I know that Dan Brown is like a joke author at this point. Like he's like the nickelback of literature, I would say. Um, but I already told you I like a good mystery thriller heist kind of thing. I don't care what people think, all right? I have I've read most of his books. I remember reading Inferno, and Inferno was also made into a film. Um, they did The Da Vinci Code, Angels and Demons, and then they, they did Inferno. And Inferno is actually one that I thought was the most interesting and the one that he kind of took a bigger risk on because the ending was very shocking to me. And if you don't want spoilers for it, um, you can skip. There will be a time, whatever, here, do your thing. Um, but if you aren't interested in reading Dan Brown's Inferno, it kind of revolves around this mad scientist who is like, we have a population problem and in order to save eventual lives, I've invented this, ooh, maybe not a good time to talk about this, Carrie. Uh, <laughs> I invented this disease and um, it's gonna kill a third of the population, shit. The whole book is Tom Hanks, whoever his name is, trying to find, like through all of these clues, trying to get to the release point of this disease and take it before it gets released into the world. The ending, and here's where the, here's where the spoiler comes in, the ending is that, in fact, the date that they were given as the day that it was going to be released onto the world was actually the incubation period. So by the time that they found it, that meant that a third of the world was already infected. And instead of like killing people, it made a third of the world's females infertile. So... I, you know, in his brain, he's like, okay, a third of the population can't reproduce, so we're gonna have a cut in the population by a third. Anyway, and so that's how it ended. Like, that's how it ended. Like, they didn't get there in time, and a third of the world, sure, they didn't die, but like, a third of the world doesn't get to choose if they want to have children or not, you know? I don't know. Like, I have mixed feelings about it in general, but like, what a way to end a book, right? And so in Inferno, the film, I was like, how are they gonna do this? This is so, are they really gonna put this in? And no, of course, they blame it all on the girl and they make her into this like lovesick. There's obviously like a girl character, right? It's like James Bond. <laughs> um, and so this particular girl ends up just being like this lovesick puppy who like makes bad decisions even though she's a brilliant scientist. I don't even remember, but basically, they pinned it all on this girl and like Tom Hanks saves the day and they made this little female scientist like this brilliant mind boiled her down into just being like in love and I hated it. I remember watching it on an airplane I think and I was just like pissed. Um, so that's the worst film adaptation. Are you an emotional reader? Basically have you ever cried while reading? I cry all the time. I laugh. I cry. I make the facial expressions of the characters. I'm a very active, I'm a participant <laughs> in the books that I read. Okay, a book that you hate so much, it literally made you throw it out of your window. So I didn't throw this out of my window. One of my favorite books is actually The Alienist by Caleb Carr. And I'm not gonna talk about that book, but it is. And so I thought it was safe to assume that I would like other books written by my 
by the author of my favorite book. Um, one of my favorite books. And so I read Surrender New York by Caleb Carr. And let me tell you, it was so bad. Like it was, I think I ranted about it maybe in another video, but it was just like, I felt Caleb Carr writing it and feeling like he was the shit and I hated it. And the, the main character was so obviously like Caleb was writing it as if it were him. And he was like this badass guy, all the chicks love him. He has a pet leopard, or like a pet cheetah or something. It was just so bad. And I was so angry that I was like, how did this man write such a good book and then such a bad book? And I was just very upset. So yeah, if, if I, if it wasn't housed in my iPad, I would have thrown it out the window. Surrender New York. Do you feel pressured to read popular stuff now that you have a bookstagram and a booktube? Actually, no, but I do, I wouldn't say it's pressure, but I definitely feel inspiration. It's like once you see a book about a million times, it makes me want to know why, you <laughs> know, what is the hype? Um, so. Yeah, I don't, I don't feel pressure, but it's definitely like maybe a little bit of FOMO. It's not even FOMO. It's like, I'm genuinely like, people are saying it's good. I want to read it, you know? Um, and that brings me to, what's it called? Red, White, and Royal Blue, is it? That is a genre, like it's a romance and it's a contemporary. I have no interest in either of those genres. Like they're just not, not ones that I'm ever really drawn to, but so many of you guys have told me to read it. So many people have said it's lovely and wonderful and great. And I'm feeling like I should read it, but I don't know. So that's like, that's the amount of pressure I feel. But it's not a bad thing. I don't have any negative feelings. Do you find it hard to focus while you are reading? Yes. I have a video about how to read more and I'll link it above and below. I have some tips for that, but do I listen to my own advice? <laughs> Not all the time, so yes, I do have issues focusing. <laughs> the biggest thing you've learned because of reading textbooks don't count. <laughs> I think more than like a specific fact, I think that reading really teaches you how other people can think and how other people can react to situations. I think especially with fantasy, you get people thrown into these really ridiculous larger than life situations that you're never going to be in and to see them deal with that or like even how people deal with grief like how people digest and express certain emotions and like certain things that they've been through I think that it's so important to read it because I've become a much more understanding person I've become a much more open-minded person in understanding that other people can feel differently than I feel. Have different values and have different priorities and just being reminded of that and being shown it so obviously in books. Um, I think that's like a really important takeaway that people should talk about when they talk about reading. It's not just like a fact, it's like learning to be a better human. <laughs> and this might be my last one, but how do you become a critical reader able to give all the points and criticism of books because I feel like I read and I'm like, eh, I liked it or eh, I didn't like it. But I don't read with a literary mind, if that makes sense. How? Yeah. So I don't, eh, I don't really read critically. Um, I 100% my first, the first thing I want out of reading is entertainment. And so I tr like honestly don't think critically about things. And then sometimes I will go back um, and and think about things deeper, but um, for the most part, no, I actually don't. Um, but if you are interested, I know that Christy Ann Jones, my girl, she has a recent video about that, like how you can look into a book and, and kind of look at the narrative. I don't know, words, words that I don't know. Um, she's a very intelligent human being and she knows what she's talking about. So go look at her video. Um, and I have though been noticing now as I'm trying to write more myself, I'm definitely paying more attention into how a story is actually constructed, like how we are introduced to the characters, like how it's actually mapped out. I've been paying more attention to that just because of my writing. Um, but I really like reading for entertainment. So a lot of times, no, I'm not, I'm not a critical reader 
either. So yeah, okay, I think that that is sort of it. That's all I have time for. I feel like if I a answer another one, this video is gonna be an hour long. So thank you for all of your questions. Thank you for joining me. I mentioned this, I think in my like community tab, um, but I have a lot of book ideas or video ideas that I'm really excited for, um, for the upcoming weeks. So, um, I'm, yeah, I'm really excited to try some new things and I will see you guys then. So thanks again to Glasses USA for sponsoring this. Um, Carrie, do you have anything to add? Just a little reminder to check the description box for the link to glassesusa.com. Thank you again for sponsoring this video. Blue light lockers. I'm telling you, get on it. Back to you. And yeah, I will see you guys then. I hope you are reading something great. Please don't leave erotica <laughs> recommendations in my comment section. I don't even want to be tempted. Um, you can start that discussion elsewhere. <laughs> I hope you guys are doing good and I will see you guys next time. So thank you always.